So you want to get into U of T Med, the hardest medical school that's even harder than Harvard Med. You've come to the right place. I was fortunate enough to get into U of T this past cycle, and you've come to the right place to get all the information you need in order to get into the medical school of your dreams. To give you a sense of the U of T MD program's admissions process, let's go over some of the admission stats for the 2021 to 2022 cycle. So that was the previous cycle. 4,302 people applied to the program, out of which 638 were interviewed and 260 went on to be accepted. That's a 6% acceptance rate. What? And before you freak out, don't worry because we have everything you'll need to know about the process covered in this video. Be sure to watch till the end though, because we do have some important details that U of T places a lot of emphasis on towards the end of the video. So you don't want to miss out on that. Now, before we get on with the video, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that we're in no way associated with the University of Toronto admissions process. And we're only giving you information from the research that we did and from our own prior experiences. So without further ado, let's get into the first step, which is to get an interview. The University of Toronto is one of the most recognized universities in Canada, and that's why its med school is so popular. Its program is four years long, like most other med schools, and it has two campuses, one in downtown Toronto and one in Mississauga. Some of the hospitals that U of T is tied to include Mount Sinai, UHN, and SickKids, you might have heard of these names before, and that's because they're recognized across the world for the work that they do. A fun fact about U of T is that insulin was actually discovered here. Now that you know a little bit about U of T, let's get into the admissions process. The pre-interview score consists of a few different things. Things like GPA, like MCAT, like autobiographical sketch or your ABS. And it also includes things like your essays and your references. Fortunately, Casper isn't required for U of T, so that's really good news. And in this video, we're going to start with the pre-interview stuff and then move on to post-interview so that you can get all the information you need. Your GPA is one of the most important parts about your U of T admissions process. This is because your GPA is assessed competitively, which means that the higher your GPA, the better your chances of getting in. The minimum GPA to apply to U of T's med school is 3.6 if you're an undergraduate student or 3.3 if you're a graduate student. But as you can see, the average GPA of someone who gets into U of T is insanely high at around 3.94. That's why we say that U of T might be harder to get into than Harvard's medical school. One thing to keep in mind about the number 3.94 is that it's not the cumulative or overall GPA of the applicants, it's actually a weighted GPA. The way U of T calculates this weighted GPA is that let's say you're applying in your fourth year or later, they drop your two worst courses per year of study. So for example, let's say you did poorly in chemistry and biology, those were your two worst marks of your first year of study, that means that those two courses won't be counted as part of the GPA calculation process for your weighted GPA. However, in all future application cycles, U of T has made it clear that they will no longer be using this weighted GPA system and instead they'll be going ahead with calculating your overall or cumulative GPA and using that for the admissions process instead. Now the MCAT is often viewed as a central point of any medical school application, but for U of T, it's merely a cutoff. So you need 125 in three sections and 124 in any of the other sections. This is the hard part. U of T is infamous for its essays and they are very important for the admissions process. So in total, there are three essays. Two of them are based on prompts that U of T gives you and you can only write 250 words for each of them. The last one can be 500 words long and it's based on one of your ABS items that you choose. Here are the prompts for this year. So you might be wondering, Rushal, how exactly are these essays marked? Well, fortunately, U of T tells us exactly how. On their website, they list these four clusters, professional, communicator, slash collaborator, slash manager, advocate, and scholar. 
they base your essay and they evaluate it based on these four clusters. So keep these in mind when you are writing your essays for UFT. The ABS statement is vital to almost every medical school application and especially for UFT. You can add up to 32 entries where you can add your activities and the way they're assessed by every medical school is by relating them to CANMED's rules. But U of T focuses more on clusters, so whenever you're writing your descriptions, make sure they're related more to the clusters and the CANMED's rules. U of T also has some academic requirements. If you're an undergraduate student, then you can only apply after you've finished two years of undergrad or you've been enrolled in a program that's up to 15 full course equivalents. One full course equivalent is equal to two half courses. And there are also some prerequisites that you have to keep in mind. So for example, you need to have two full course equivalents in a life sciences major or life sciences course. And then you have to have one full course equivalent in a social science, humanities or language. If you're a graduate student, you have to complete your master's or PhD before you apply to U of T in Canada. And if you're an international student, you have to complete a non-medical bachelor's degree that is equivalent to a four-year degree here in Canada. For both of these, the prerequisite courses that we talked about for undergraduate students are the same. For every medical school in Ontario, you need three references. So in order to do that, you just need to fill their contact information out on the OMSAS portal and then submit it. Once it's submitted, the forms are sent to your three references and they're supposed to fill it out. And once it's filled out, it goes to all the medical schools that you're applying to. But make sure you choose your three references wisely because U of T pays special attention to these three references. The last thing we'd like to mention is the Academics Explanations essay. This is completely optional and you totally don't have to do it. However, if you believe that your marks or your GPA don't really represent your actual abilities, then you can write this essay to explain why your marks are like this. So for example, let's just say you had a really bad year where you had some sort of horrible accident and that's why your marks were so low. You could write about this in the academic explanations essay and there's a possibility that they may give you an exception. All of these factors are totaled together and you're given a file review score but you won't actually know what your score is. All you will know is that if your score is high enough, you will be given an interview invite. Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> Whoa, 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 okay, calm down, breathe. I'm trying. Now you might be wondering when U of T invites actually come out. Now U of T is unique in the sense that it sends out three waves of interviews. So the first wave is usually in late January, and then the second wave is early February, and then the last wave is usually late February. So interviews take place two weeks after the invite sent out. So technically there's three different interviews. The format U of T uses isn't like any other med school. As you can probably already tell, U of T likes to be different. <laughs> Are you serious? And in this case, they use a modified personal interview or the MPI. In this interview, you talk to one interviewer for 12 minutes, and then there's a break in between different interviews, and that break lasts for three minutes. During the pandemic, U of T changed their format to something called the VMPI. The V stands for virtual, and it's basically an online version of the modified personal interview. Depending on the COVID restrictions this cycle, they may go ahead with this same format that they've been using for a couple admission cycles now. The way this format works is that you're given three minutes to read the question or prompt and think about it, and then five minutes to actually answer the question. You won't be talking to anyone directly, but instead you'll be talking to a screen and your answer will be recorded. It'll later be sent off to be evaluated by independent interviewers. Now, here's a question. How are your interviews evaluated? And you probably guessed it right, it's through clusters. The same clusters you use to write your essays and the same clusters you use to write your ABS statement. So whenever you're practicing for your interview, make sure you integrate those clusters into your answers. After you're done your interviews, it's just a waiting game. Your results come out on the second Tuesday of May every year. I don't know why they do this, but it's some sort of ritual they have maybe. So in terms of breakdown, your pre-interview score makes up 33% of the decision whether you get into medical school or not. And then your post interview or your interview score is what consists of 67% of that decision. Therefore, you can see that the interview is indeed very important. To end off the video, here are some U of T med students who are going to talk about their experience and some pieces of advice that you can use to get in. Hi everyone, 
My name is Vikas and I'm a second year anesthesiology resident at the University of Toronto. I have completed my medical school training here at U of T and have been very fortunate to be a part of the admissions team over the past couple of years. In this role, I realized that this institution appreciates applicants that are all rounded. And as cliche as that sounds, what I mean by this is that apart from the high MCAT and high GPA scores, what UFT really values is the applicant's ability to reflect on the longevity of their extracurricular activities, on their leadership potential, uh, on their scholastic activity, including research publications and presentations. And lastly, to really have strong references that can vouch for their academic and overall personality as they embark on this new journey. Overall, I've really enjoyed my experience here at U of T and I would like to take this chance to wish all prospective applicants uh, good luck and all the best. And that brings us to the end of the video. Getting into U of T is a long and difficult process, but hopefully this video narrows the approach down. We'll also be making these types of videos for all other medical schools in Ontario and Canada. If you want to see any first, drop it in the comments below. See you next time.